Hello everyone, Michael here for Tactic Imperialis. Welcome to episode 2 of War Gaz Cult Codex Analysis. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the formations found within this book, of which there are a grand total of 14, which is a lot. Um, some of them, in fact all of them, are old versions or updated versions of old formations. Some of them haven't changed at all. So what I'm going to do is in the description you will find a series of timestamps. Now those will tell you when I start talking about each formation and when I finish talk, well, and when I start the next one. So at the start of every formation, there will be a timestamp in the description. So what I'm gonna do is as I go through these formations, if I've seen it before and I say it hasn't changed, then feel free to skip ahead to the next one. Now, if you own Sanctus Reach, then you will probably have seen these before. Like there are, uh, one, two, three, four, four, five at least in here that I six maybe that I've never seen before even though you might have as part of the um, uh, do, 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 uh, red wire so if those you have seen before I won't know if they've changed so sorry but if you start to realize that they haven't changed at all feel free to skip ahead again links will be in or well, timestamps will be in the description so um, if you missed the last episode make sure to check out another link in the description that'll take you to the orc videos playlist what that will do is I'll give you a full look at the orc codex which of course is going to be talking about in this um, video. I won't be covering unit costs, I won't be covering weapons or anything like that in this video. All I'll be talking about is the units and the rules associated with the formation. As a result, if you don't know the orcs, check that link and then you can look at all how the orcs work, how our Gaskell used to work, and of course you can check out the rules um, and the great wildband attachment that I'm going to keep referring back to in this video. So, let's get cracking. First formation on the chopping block today is the Council of War. And this one, I don't think it's changed, but there's a lot of new stuff that it works with, so I would stick around. It is made up of Gaskell Thracker, Mad Doc Grotsnick, two war bosses, a big mech, and a squad of knobs, which is um, forced to take a war banner, which is a 20 or a 15 point upgrade. It's a better war banner, I'll explain why in a minute. Now, this formation gets a bunch of extra rules, which we'll cover in a second, but they also get all the rules associated with all the characters, so... Any rule that Grotznik has, primarily Fearless and Rampage, apply to this squad, which is really, really helpful. And of course, anything that Gazkul gets, that helps as well. So this squad is also Fearless because of Grotznik. It might not stay Fearless, of course, if Grotznik gets killed, but we have a way around this and it's really, really evil. So special rules, biggest and the best from last episode, and the boss is watching. The boss is watching while Grotznik is alive is, of course, irrelevant. Biggest and the best applies to Gaskell, because if you're taking this thing, he is your warlord. Uh, boss mod. All models in this formation must be deployed as a single unit, and models with the independent character special rule cannot choose to leave or join the unit. So you can't sneak in an extra big mech. You can't sneak in an extra pain boy or, an, or a weird boy. But by the same token, the two war bosses, the big mech, Grotznik and Gaskell, cannot leave this squad. It's designed to be his war council, that's hence the name. So it's designed to stick together and kick butt, and no, one, no other one's allowed. Uh, the Banner of the Great War. As long as the bearer of the war banner is still alive, all models in the same unit have the feel of special rule. See why Grotznik being dead isn't as big an issue as you think. And add one to the weapon skill characteristic on their profile, which is what you'd expect from a war banner. In addition, all friendly units with the Orcs faction within 12 inches reroll their morale and pinning checks. Now this is also pretty much irrelevant, um, as long as you're running the Great War Band Detachment, because in that detachment, you get a war every turn, including turn one. And Gazgul's Warlord trait is Prophet of the War, which means when he calls that war, the entire army becomes fearless, or anything with here we go becomes fearless. As a result, your entire army becomes fearless from your first shooting phase. And that means that, well, you're never ever running away ever. The only time you could run away is when your opponent goes first and shoots you. And for that, you have re-rolls to your morale checks, which is helpful. Um, it's basically like having the Bellowing Tyrant Warlord trait as well as all the other Warlord traits that Gazkul gets. Because of Gazkul's lieutenants, the war bosses in this formation add one to their weapon skills. So their weapon skill six base, which is the same as Gaz. And of course, if the banner's alive, their weapon skill seven, same as Gazkul. Furthermore, at the start of every game before deployment, make two rolls on the War Gazkul Warlord traits table. Rerolling duplicates. Uh, just a reminder, if you did not have a look or have forgotten, uh, they are Ballistic Skill 3, Crusader for the unit, Rage on the Warlord, Outflank for the Warlord and his unit, a Mastercrafted Weapon for your Warlord, and Feel No Pain for your Warlord. So, 
but they're not bad. They're not a bad set here. Um, reroll duplicates. So if you roll two ones, you roll one of them again. You don't get to reroll um, generally because you're not the warlord. And apply both of the results to Gazgol in addition to his standard warlord trait, which is Prophet of the Wires, we've already discussed. So the ones you want are Crusader, because you'll be able to run every turn, because you'll be wiring every turn. And sweeping advance is kind of nice. Rage, Rage is never bad. And, even, and if you combo it with Rampage, it might even do even more damage. Um, Outflank is kind of meh, because you want Gaskell on the board all, all game, simply. Because, let's be honest, don't, don't take this formation off the board ever. It gives your army fearless for the entire game, so it doesn't want Outflank. Um, a Mastercrafted Power Claw, not going to complain about that. Feel no pain, you have Grotznik, but it might be nice to have it on, just in case Grotznik gets shot in the head. Um, BS3 is kind of bad. So those Warlord traits are pretty useful, applied to Gazgul, and they're free, so no complaints whatsoever. So, costings, minimum cost for this formation is about 600 points, I think, and it's 225, 160, 120... Okay. Yeah, and then another about 100. That's assuming three knobs. Um, so it is pretty expensive to put this thing up at a decent size. In terms of what you do with upgrades, well, go mad. This is designed to be a Death Star, so use it as such. Uh, give the war bosses Mega Armor. Maybe give one of them a Super Cyborg for super resilience. That way he can tank all the hits for Gazkull, even though Gazkull will have his two invulnerable save permanently on if he is part of the Great Wildband Detachment. It can't hurt to have a guy tanking for him. Uh, give the Big Mac a custom force field, or the Mega Force field if you have way too many points going spare. And um, take the knobs up to at least five. Um, if you want to ride in a truck, then... Well, okay. So, if you take this formation bare bones, you take three, four, five, six, seven, nine in transport. So you have three spaces. So that means put, both Warbot, put all the characters in Mega Armor, fits in a truck. Take three extra knobs, fits in a truck. How you want to do it? up to you. Um, if you want to go in a battle wagon, you will always fit, because the knobs at 10, Big Mech, and War Bosses, and Gazgol have Mega Armor, so that's 4 guys in Mega Armor, that's 18, Grotsnick makes 19, and nobody else can join. So you'll always fit in a battle wagon, um, and you'll always fit in a stomper. Uh, if you want to ride in a truck, then keep the squad small, which may have some benefit with Rampage, I can't quite exactly remember how Rampage works. So yeah. This formation is really, really nasty, and it's a command formation, so you'll only get one of it in your army. Of course, it's got unique characters, so why would it have any more anyway? But it's really, really powerful, and I really like it. This is the formation that makes the Great Warband go from good to ridiculous, because what it basically reads is, if you're, instead of your detachment containing a ward is the war special, where you can call the war each and every turn, including the first turn, what it actually reads is, if this detachment contains your warlord, uh, it contains the Council of War, your entire army is fearless, and your warlord has a 2 plus invulnerable save. Which is insane. So yeah, it's powerful, but it's expensive. Next up, Gazkul's Bully Boys. This is a big Meganov's formation, and this one has not changed at all. So if you know how this one works, skip ahead. It is a made up of three units of Meganov's, which must include at least five models. So the minimum investment cost is 15 models, 600 points. It's a lot. Um, they have plus one weapon skill for the Bully Boy special rule. The biggest and the best and the boss is watching. Um, but the boss is watching is irrelevant because they're fearless. This is the big thing. If you're not running the council, fearless on your orcs is great. And getting it on a Mega Knobs formation is insane. Because Mega Knobs get really, really punished by the boss is watching. Because you never have 10 dudes in your squad. So instead of just being able to shrug those hits off, quite a lot, they're actually going to run away all the time. So Fearless is great. They also cause fear just to ram home the fact that they are really good fighters. It's kind of irrelevant because you're hitting on threes in in many cases anyway, but it means you're less likely to get hit back by those pesky thunder hammers, and trust me, you don't want to get hit by thunder hammers. So the Bully Boys formation is a really rock solid core. And if you want to rock it in transport, then you feel free to do so. Attaching some characters, go for it. You can attach Gazkul to this as a separate Lord of War as part of a combined arms attachment, but if you're going to take Gazkul, you may as well take the council, because, well, why wouldn't you? Right. Next up is Da Vulture Squad, which has had one source of relevant change. Just one second, I'm just going to drink. Right. 
The Vulture Squad is Boss, Zagstruck, and three units of Stormboids. Pretty good. No restrictions whatsoever, so you can have a minimum squad to five, max squads of, of course, 30. So that's potentially 91 rocket packs. They have biggest and the best, and the boss is watching, just in case. And it kind of makes sense that the boss is watching with Zagstruck, because Zagstruck basically beats the daylights out of his subordinates. And they have three special rules. The first one is dead on target-ish. All units from this formation begin the game in reserves and must arrive by a deep strike, which you kind of expect is how Zagstruck used to work. However, units from this formation only scatter D6 when arriving. This sort of encourages you to take larger squads because you'll actually not scatter off and have this problem of space. Of course, if you are running a 30-man squad, then what are you doing? Honestly, you just won't fit. Bear in mind you roll for every unit individually. There is a way around this, and we'll cover that in a sec. Next up, Ard Itters. Hammer of Wrath attacks meant by any Stormboy models in a unit joined by Boss Sagstruck King the Shred special rule as long as he's part of it. So you get re-rollable fives to wound in most cases, or fours to wound, instead of just fours or fives to wound. Note, this does not apply to Zagstruck Strength 8 AP2 Hammer of Wrath from the Vulture's Claws, but it's still pretty helpful nonetheless. And remember, you're getting Hammer of Wrath all the time in big squads, meaning you don't need to use your jump packs as part of the charge, meaning you can use them in the movement phase. And finally, this is what makes both of those rules even better, is Vulture Squad. During deployment, the controlling player can choose to form Boss Zagstruck and all the Stormboy units in this formation into a single one, known as the Vulture Squad. Zagstruck cannot leave this unit. The Vulture Squad counts as three units for victory points if it is completely destroyed. So, it counts as three units for victory points purposes. Which is actually one less than it would if all the units were individual. So, if in a victory points game where it's like kill points or tactical objectives, there is no downside to grouping these guys up. The other major upsides is you only roll once for everything to come on instead of four on three, four separate occasions. And you also get more shred on your Hammer of Wrath because you've got a larger squad. Now, the minimum investment cost for this formation is 200 points-ish. And that's really good value. That's 15 Stormboys led by Zagstruck. And basically what you've done is by taking this formation and then fusing them, you've gained two slots for knobs if you want them. And you've given all your dudes shred, a reduced scatter, but you have to start in reserve. 200 points to do that, I'm really happy with that. That's a really nice formation, and it's nice and cheap as well, which is something that's quite rare in this book. All right, next up is the Blitz Brigade. This one has also gained an extra special rule. It is a formation of five battle wagons. <laughs> five armoured juggernauts. Oh, yes. Um, every battle wagon in this formation must be upgraded with either a reinforced ram or a death roller, however, so the cost of this thing is, well, it's high. I mean, it's 110 points for a battle wagon, so absolute minimum cost you're looking at is about 575. If you want to go all death rollers, you're looking at about 650. And, of course, there's variables in between, depending on how many rollers and rams you take. They have biggest and the best, and the boss is watching, for no reason. And they also have scout. Yeah, scouting battle wagons. Now, I'm sure most of you are rushing to load these guys up with infantry and slam them in the face on turn one. Hold your horses. The Know Your Limit special rule denies you. Infantry units that begin the game in Bartsman or Battle Wagon from this formation cannot charge on turn one if you scouted. Sorry. No can do. Because it would just be obscene. I mean, five Battle Wagons each loaded up with massive squads of boys or knobs or mega knobs pile out. Call a war, run and charge if you're running the council with everything. Just no. Just no. So that's not a thing. Um, so unlucky. But that's not the role of the Blitz Brigade. The Blitz, the, the, the Blitz Brigade is here to kill stuff. So you may as well give it big guns while you're at it. Unless you're going flat out, in which case, don't bother. This is because of the Crushem rule. Any vehicle rammed by a unit from this formation takes a strength 10 hit. Do not calculate the strength of the ramming hit as you normally would. This is great. Battle wagons aren't fast enough to generate strength 10 hits. The maximum they can generate is 14 plus 4 plus 1. is strength 9. Um, but that means they take quite a sizable hit in return. As a result, this is just awesome. And it allows you to go fast and hit things. Um, if you don't want to pat them with guns. If you want to load them up with guns, then it just means you're better at running stuff over. Guard parking lots ruining your day? Not anymore. <laughs> so the Blitz Brigade is pretty fun. It's expensive on your wallet as much as anything else, but it is pretty powerful if you can get it to work. 
Um, the question is, do you load it up with stuff? And the, I would say, yeah, you do. Um, the main reason is battle wagons are vulnerable to side and rear shots. So if things can get behind them after they scout, let's say you scout, you move, you go flat out if you're not running guns, your opponent could get around the side of you. So what I would recommend you do is you load at least the two flanking battle wagons, like the two on the sides if you're running a five in the line, load them up with infantry and then just flood them out of the side. That way they're protected. Also, if anything's got a gun or a death roller, give it an hard case just to keep it alive. All right. Next up, the Dread Mob. Uh, this has not changed as far as I can read, um, but it's still pretty powerful nonetheless. So it is a big mech, a pain boy, two Gorkonauts or Morkonauts in any combination, so two Gork or two Mork or one of each. Uh, three Death Dreads and three units of at least three, of exactly three killer camps. So it must include three more exactly. So that's 14 Walkers stomping around the board. Now, the cost of this thing is ridiculous, because nine killer cans is 450 points, two death dreads is about 100 points each, 650, and then about 500 points for the two big hawkers, give or take. So you're looking at 1150 plus the two characters, it's nearly a 1250 point army in and of itself, without even paying for upgrades. It's a bit less, so you've got a little bit of upgrade leeway, but good grief, you pay a lot. However, this will be one of the coolest armies to run at 1500 points. It's like, oh yeah, my army's just walkers, all your anti-infantry guns are useless. Mwah. Um, so big still the best than the boss is watching just in case your Big Mac is the Warlord. Um, now you might be wondering why there's a Pain Boy. Uh, law reasons, and it's a 50 point tax. But what this guy's useful for is if you're running them as part of the Great Warband, is you can take the Pain Boy and put him into some of the core formations that don't get Pain Boy options without having to take up a command slot um, that you would normally have for the Council of War. So if you want just um, core formation, this formation, Council of War, you could then have a Pain Boy free to slot into a squad, which is pretty helpful. And a Big Mac. Uh, they have Here We Go, so if every model in a unit has this special rule, the unit can reroll a single dice when determining its charge range. Which is fun. Trust me, this is fun, because walkers don't normally get it. And the little sneaky thing I'm going to tell you. War says everything with Here We Go. Yeah. So that means that this thing can war. Running and charging Death Dreads and Gorkonauts and Killer Cans? Oh, I'm already planning and plotting if I had enough walkers to pull this one off. It's incredible. <laughs> so yes, that's a lot of fun. Um, and also they have Wall of Steel. So if they charge, their Hammer of Wrath hits inflict D3 instead of 1. So if you have Hammer of Wrath... D3 hits, which considering that your walkers are strength 8 or strength 6, yeah, you're going to hit pretty damn hard with D3 at them. And then still reg face. Great value. Right, so that is the Dread Mob. I love this formation for narrative reasons because it just, it, I love this aspect of orcs with its stompy dreadnoughts everywhere. Um, so if I had it, I'd run it, um, but I don't. Right, moving on. Boss Snickrot's Red Skull Commandos. Uh, this is exactly the same, I think, as it was in the old War Gaskell supplement. Um, I should point out that everything we covered um, after the Council of War is an auxiliary. I, I, I probably is quite clear, but these are all auxiliary formations. If they're not, then I'll point it out. So this formation is Boss, Snickrot, and four units of commandos. No restrictions, so any sort of um, doodars you like, any unit size, any weapon, you know the score. They have big extended best and the boss is watching, um, or punching dudes in the head for no reason. And they have the Sneaky Gets special rule. Boss Snickrot must join one of the units in this formation, no fusing, and the whole formation must be held back as reserves. When you roll for reserves, make a single reserve roll for all the units in this formation, which is pretty helpful. Um, all units in this formation move on from any table edge when they arrive, but they must all enter from the same one, which could be left, could be right, could be rear, could be your own if you need to be. And no dice roll is required to determine this, you pick. So, oh yeah, all those Tau guns, um, yeah, now I've got 40 angry orcs right behind you. Have a nice day. Furthermore, on the turn they arrive, whichever turn it so happens to be, any unit in this formation that does not shoot in the shooting phase on that turn can reroll its failed cover saves until the start of the next turn. It only applies on the turn you arrive. Turns after that doesn't work, but this one, pretty good. Because quite frankly, you're going to be getting five rerollable five ups 
if you've got a unit in the way. And most commando units have stealth, which is pretty good. However, it gets even better. All units in this formation have their stealth special rule replaced with shrouded on the turn they arrive from reserves until the start of the next turn. Then they go back to regular stealth, which means that when this formation comes on, if you come on and run into cover, you have a re-rollable three plus cover save. Unless your opponent has brought flamers, he's not killing you. This is incredibly, ooh, excuse me, incredibly useful. It's pretty cheap to put on the board. I mean, you're looking at about 300 points base cost, probably even less. I can't remember what Snickrot's cost exactly is. So you can easily get this formation on the board for quite cheap just to cause mayhem. Of course, you need a lot of commandos, but well, that's up to you. I like it though. And it's actually quite a bit more survivable than you might expect with re-rollable shrouded if you don't shoot, so. Right, formation number seven, Captain Badrook's Flash Gets. This is a new one on me, so this may have not changed from its original iteration. If it hasn't, I apologize, but I don't know. That's better. So, it is made up of Captain Badrook and two units of Flash Gets, which must have 10 models. So, it's quite a high investment to put this thing on the board. Um, but it's a lot of shots. Like, this thing is 60 shots plus Badrock. And listen to this. During deployment, you can choose to form Captain Badrock and all of the units in this formation into a single unit. Kind of like you can with the Vulture Squad. Um, it counts as three units for victory points if it's completely destroyed. Note, completely destroyed. So you have to kill the whole thing to get any points. So it's a pretty neat way of doing it. It allows you to really focus your fire on wiping things out. However, your shooting phase is going to take a year because all SNAS guns, which is basically your flash gate weapons carried by models in this formation, have master crafted. Yeah, we put some twin linking on. Minor twin linking. Um, the problem is you have to roll master crafted for every individual model. So when you start rolling, you won't know, um, as far as I'm aware, there's three shots to a SNAS gun, meaning that you have to roll each set of three alone and then pick one of them to re-roll. Because let's say you pick up 60 dice, roll them, get 20 hits. Which ones missed? Did, like, is that six guys will hit with all of their shots and then you get 14 re-rolls? Or did one guy, each guy hit with one shot and you get 20 re-rolls? See the issue. So it's kind of difficult to do anything about that other than just really, really stretches out your shooting phase. But as long as your opponent doesn't want to kill you for taking ages, it's really, really powerful. Like I did the maths and 50% 50, 50, 50 of the time, when you're AP3 or better, of course, you are killing like 15 plus Marines. It's disgusting. And on Terminators, well, same theory, but you're only doing it a fifth of the time. Sorry, a third of the time rather than half. But it's a really nasty formation nonetheless. Note that formation does not have biggest and the best of the bosses watching. Remember that. So next up is your first core formation. So this one you should probably pay attention to. Uh, it's the War Band. It's basically the same as the Orc War Band from the Orc Codex. In fact, I think it's exactly the same, um, except it's had a slight reword in a couple of places. So it is made up of one war boss, one mech, one unit of either knobs or mega knobs. Uh, basically, pick whichever your war boss is taking. Or if your war boss is mega armor, take mega armor. If he's not, take knobs. You could still take mega knobs though. Uh, six squads of boys and a squad of grots. No restrictions. So any weapons, any war gear, any size, standard practice really. Um, now the problem I have with this formation is its special rules because they're completely useless. So boss of the war. If this is your primary detachment and you're not taking the great war and you just take this as your primary, you can re-roll the result when rolling in the war traits table in Codex Orc or War Gaskell. Now bear in mind that to upgrade from this to a great war band, you literally have to take a squad of grots. That's it. So why would you take that when you could just say, if this detachment is your primary, you can re-roll any war war traits roll. The green skin hordes, every unit with 10 or more models in this formation is Hammer of Wrath in any assault phase in which is successfully charged an enemy unit and the dice rolled is 10 or more. Before modifiers, no, it doesn't need to be the full distance and if the unit size will reduce below 10, it doesn't matter as long as you still make it. Again, when you could pay 35 points for a unit of grots to take that and make it 
every unit with 10 or more models gains Hammer of Wrath, period, when it charges, not have that dice roll stipulation, what's the point? Stampede, if this formation's War Wars is your warlord, you can use his War Special Rule each and every turn after the first. Again, 35 points to take that to War every turn, including the first. So, just not helpful. It's a good core formation, it's nice and solid, it's a good core for your army, but its rules are irrelevant because for 35 points, you can make it into a great war band, at which point you're just better off. So the investment cost for this thing is, what is it? 60, 75, because it's a mech, not a big mech. Um, assuming knobs, because they're cheaper, 54, so 130 basically. And then six squads of boys, so that's 60 guys. Uh, so 360, I'll do to that. 500, it's it's nearly 550 points. Minimum cost, of course, you would take more knobs or you would take mega knobs and you'd upgrade your war boss, of course. But the minimum cost to make a great war band attachment, therefore, is less than 600 points. And then, of course, you add stuff in and go for funsies. Next up, the Gorkonaut Crushing Crew. We're back to the auxiliary for a second. This is basically three Gorkonauts. And that's it. Three Gorgonauts. Uh, no restrictions on them whatsoever. Um, so you can take whatever weapons, um, if you can switch weapons out on Gorgonauts, I don't think you can. Uh, but you can take the upgrades like Grot Riggers, which is the main thing. And they have a rule called Escalating Rivalry. Basically, keep these guys alive and they get better. At the start of each game turn, you get extra rules. All models in the formation gain these special rules listed. So on turn one, you get Napol. You're just a, Gork a squad of three, a block of three Gorgonauts. Not a squad, you still operate independently. On a two, you get Rage. Rage is pretty good. On a three, you get Rage, and you also get Hatred, which means that you're really going to be putting the pain onto people. On a four, or from turn four onwards, um, yeah, you get Rage, you get Hatred, and you get Shred. Oh, oh yeah, buddy. It's nasty. That's all I'm going to say. Because re-rolls to hit in the first round, re-rolls to wound, you're going to wreck so much face. Um, so yeah, this formation is good. It's expensive as hell, like 750 points each to put on the board, but it's really good. And keep them alive in some way. Maybe camp a custom force field mech in between them, hidden in a squad of boys or something. That way they're covering him and he's covering them. Sneaky tactics. Next up is your second core formation. So if you don't like the war band, and I don't blame you, you could take the Goth Kill Mob instead. Now, this is this is quite a cool formation. I like this one. So it's a war boss, which could also be Gruck Face Ripper. Uh, it's the only one where it stipulates that Gruck Face Ripper may be taken in place of the war boss. So I'm assuming he can't be taken as part of the other formations, it's only this one. So if you don't know who Gruck Face Ripper is, he was the guy out of Sanctus Reach. And um, he's all right. I mean, he's 135 points. He's power claw. He's got heavy armor, power claw, combi rocket, attack squid. Um, his power claw has shred, and his warlord trait is bellowing tyrant locked, which is a pretty good one. However, it's not insane, um, particularly if you're going to be adding it into this army with the Council of War. You don't need it at all. But if you aren't running it as council, then it's good. Um, so it's also it's this war boss, a unit of knobs, three squads of minimum size twenty boys, so that's sixty dudes at least, a gorkonaut, two death dreads and a unit of at least three killer cans. So let's just do the math quickly. 150 minimum, 350, 600, 960, just over a th about 1020. You're looking at about 1100 points, give or take a bit, uh, mainly take a bit for this formation. So it's over a thousand points to get this formation on the table. And then of course you upgrade it to have more knobs, you upgrade your war boss, unless you're taking, a, unless you're taking Gruck. Um, you upgrade your boys, maybe. Um, but you don't need to do that much to this formation. And it makes a pretty cool core of an army. Of course, it's a core formation, but you don't need to add that much to it. If you are going to add to it, of course, you want the council. Um, but uh, for other things, like maybe you want some heavy armor, but you don't really need it uh, in the form of the bully boys. Maybe you want some heavy fire, but again, you might not need it in the form of badrock. Maybe you want some transports and maybe load up all of these squads into... Uh, battle wagons for the Blitz Brigade to give them basically a free extra move, but they can't use it to charge. And you can use them as sort of the screens of the two squads of boys. One, two ba one battle wagon will be empty, but that's fine. Put it as a sacrificial one at the front or something. Um, 
and then we've got a few other formations at the end which we're going to keep and get on to. So this formation also causes fear, which is pretty nice. Um, it won't come into play that often, but when it does, well, your boys are just going to live, which is awesome. And infantry units in this formation can reroll their charge distances. Note, not the walkers. That would be too good. Uh, so your boys, your knobs, and your warboss can reroll their charges, which is pretty good considering why every turn if you're running this as part of the warband attachment, which you probably are. So it's pretty good. Gotta say, I like this formation quite a lot. And of course, remember, if you want this as a warband, all you need to do is pay 35 points for some rocks. Now we have four more formations to cover, and then one to moan about, because it's not here. So, Blitzer Bomber Squadron, this is from Sanctus Reach, and it is basically three Blitzer Bombers, and that's it. No restrictions, so take your extra stuff if you want it. And they have a rule called Drop the Bomb. So, Blitzer Bombers in this formation reroll failed armor penetration rolls with their bombs. Awesome, because you have armor bane, it's really, really helpful. And they can choose to reroll glances in order to get a pen but you must keep the second result if you um, get wrecked by it. So you are now infinitely better at killing vehicles with this thing. So that's what you do with them. You drop them on vehicles. Strength 7 armor bay was all right at killing vehicles. Like it was 50, it was average glancing a land raider, um, but now it's re-rollable. Well, you might actually get the pen. And if you do get a glance and you need the pen, let's say it's armor 11 and you roll a four with your armor bane and you get a glance. You don't want a glance. There's a, one in 12 chance you get wrecked, but you can still re-roll it if you want it penetrating. Good vibes. I like this formation a lot, but again, investment cost and it's three flyers. Actually, three flyers is pretty good, but they're not the best dogfight in this formation for that later. Burner Bomber Squadron. This is three Burner Bombers. Kel Surprise. And it has a rule called Scorch to Earth. Add one to the strength of any Burner Bombs used by the bombers in this formation. Not the Scorcher missiles if you pay for them, just the bombs. So... Strength 6 AP4 large blast bombs. Oh yes. Ooh, ooh, excuse me. Oh yes. Guard, you're dead. Tau, you're dead. Eldar, you're dead. It, it's fantastic. And remember, it also has ignores cover. It's just really good. Genuinely, if you want to one-shot Tau, Eldar, and co-commanders, it's just disgustingly good for that. So, I like the Burner Bomber Squadron. I'm not the biggest fan of Burner Bombers. I prefer the Blitzers and the Dacker Jets, but... This formation is good. Now, guess which one this one is? The Dacker Jet Squadron. Good guess. So it's three Dacker Jets. Again, uh, instead of the other ones, it's just three Dacker Jets. Um, I would recommend you take them with fly bosses, although it's not um, forced upon you. Why? To give them some Dacker rule. Dacker Jets in this formation have the Tank Hunter Special rule if their target is a flyer. So if you're shooting flyers, you want a fly boss, so you should get BS3. And you have tank hunters as well, which makes you better at killing because Dacker Jets are not the best at killing flyers quickly. Tank hunters will help with that. All right, final formation is the Air Armada, which is five flyers, three Dacker Jets, one Burner Bomber, one Blitzer Bomber. One Dacker Jet will be a fly boss, only one, because it would say at least one if you were allowed to take more. Uh, it has one special rule, and it's a lovely little thing. Airborne Horde. If a flyer from this formation leaves combat airspace, it will, when it returns to play, do so with its full complement of hull points and its starting quota of one use only weapons. So, if your flyer is damaged or it's done its job, just fly off the board. The bombers are really good for this because they can drop their second bomb as they leave, which is really, really nice. So come on on turn two and then fly over, drop a bomb, fly over off the board whilst dropping a bomb. Hopefully don't kill yourself if you're a blitzer bomber. And then when you come back, full reload which is great, and a full heal, which is really useful for the Daka Jets if they're going to be going dogfighting. And because you've got three Daka Jets, your opponent's flyer, or flyers, or anti-flyer weapons, will just won't know what to shoot. So it's really, really good. Um, one thing, um, don't drink with the fly boss. The fly boss is there to kill the flyers. You won't have tank hunter like you would as part of a Daka Jet squadron, but still pretty nice. And that's all your formations. Now there's one glaring omission. They got rid of the green tide. We need to have a word. The green tide is the coolest formation that the orcs can field. It was ten squads of boys led by Warboss. Like that, that, that sounds pretty bland, but it was one of the most epic formations to put on the board. Because I've got a battle report where I use that thing against Kieran, 
And I just panned over to it and we both just laughed looking at a hundred orcs on the board. I've got about 130 orcs that I want that I painted up last semester just to field them as a green tide. And then this thing, this thing got rid of it. Ugh. I digress. The green tide is sorely missed. However, it could have been obscene because of this uh, wire every turn thing, which is pretty scary. Although it had wire every turn except turn one, which was pretty nasty. And I think the main reason it's gone is because there's a lot more fearless available, particularly through the Council of War, uh, because it would have really, really made this thing unstoppable. Um, and a million hammer graphs is also fun because it didn't have that, I don't think. Now, the question I want to ask is, would you still allow the green tide to be run? Um, what we're thinking is me and Kieran are going to just create a custom game where it's me with a green tide versus him and an army of bloodthirsters and just see what the hell happens at two and a half K, which is for me, it's um, a full green tide of 300. Um, I don't have 300, but it would be fun to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to say as our house rule, because I don't know what the official ruling is, you can use the green tide but not here. So if you're running a Great Wireband Detachment, the Green Tide is a standalone formation that does not benefit from this. However, if WAR works outside of your own detachment, i.e. your WAR can affect the formations that aren't part of it, or a combined arms detachment that's not your main detachment, then I still would concede the Green Tide to be awesomely good. Um, so, let me know what you think about that, um, because I still want to use a green tide and um, I really want to. But now that the old one is gone, I, I don't know if I'm allowed. Um, we'll probably house rule it for fundies. Anyway, that is all of your formations, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another bonus episode because this is the end of the book. Right? There's nothing more to talk about in here tactically. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a bonus episode coming up um really soon where I'm just going to go over this book as a whole talk about the detachment and how I would go about using it in the peak efficiency as well as talking about points because one thing that pretty much unifies every formation in this book they ain't cheap they ain't cheap at all so if you're wanting to run this thing you will need a lot of points and maybe I can help you with economizing as well as obviously what to do when you want complete funsies just as a quick um thing just before I wrap up I just want to give you my thoughts on my favorite formation and what I think are going to be the most useful so my core formation of choice is the goth kill mob the war band is about half the price but the kill mob is way stronger council of war if you can fit it in take it it's insane um, for my auxiliaries I like badrux flash kits I like the dread mob um, I quite like runts if you're playing a very cheap game because it just gives you that auxiliary choice you need if you don't want to take anything else you just want Core, Council of War, I need an auxiliary. Oh, grots, easy. Um, I like the Speed Freaks because I'm biased. Um, and all the individual take unit stuff I like. Um, but formations wise, I don't mind the Vulture Squad or the Red Skull Commandos, but they don't really suit my playstyle. And it doesn't really suit this book's playstyle either. This book is designed to go hordes on the board for the face. But we'll talk about that in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave it a like if you did. Comment if you have anything to say. And make sure to subscribe. We're well on our way to 800 subscribers now. And I would really appreciate all of your support. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Michael Vitatsky Imperialis. And until the next time, I will see you all again. Bye for now.